This is the first part in a two-part series. Today, I'm going to be beating Pokemon Emerald with only a Vigoroth. And then tomorrow, I'm going to be back to do the same thing again with Slacking. This is also going to be my first middle stage evolution in Generation 3. However, Vigoroth feels like a very unique middle stage evolution because its ability is Vital Spirit. Whereas both Slack Off and Slacking have Truant, so this Pokemon doesn't have the downside that both of them have. Also, for a middle evolution, while it does have a slow growth rate, it has decent stats. 80 HP, attack, and defense, 55 special attack and special defense, and 90 speed. As a normal type with higher attack than special attack, it's going to be dealing mostly physical damage, so today I went with a naughty nature to boost its attack stat and lower its special defense stat. Vigoroth's move pool seems very reminiscent of those from normal types in Generation 1. It starts with only same type moves, Scratch, Focus Energy, Encore, and Uproar. Note that in Generation 3, Uproar's base power is 50, it was changed to 90 starting in Generation 5. Through Level Up, Vigoroth gets access to Fury Swipes, Slash, Counter, Focus Punch, and Reversal. I don't think the fighting type moves that come later on are going to be particularly useful just because of the conditions of their damage, but I do think that Vigoroth is going to use some of its TM moves. After all, it gets a wide range of coverage. Water Pulse, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Solar Beam, Thunderbolt, Thunder, Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Shockwave, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Aerial Ace, and Rock Smash. I'll note here that while it does say that it learns rest, this move is not going to be useful for it, specifically because it has Vital Spirit, which prevents it from falling asleep, even if this status is self-inflicted. That does mean that the only recovery Vigoroth has access to is through the Leftovers and the Shell Bell, which both come quite late into the playthrough. With all of that explained, let's start talking about Roxanne, because she is going to be the first major hurdle that this thing needs to overcome. Uproar is by far the best move that Vigoroth has in the early game. It functions similarly to Rollout, where you cannot discontinue the use of the move once you start. But it isn't as good as Rollout because its power doesn't build each turn that it's used, it just stays at base 50. At least with the same type attack bonus, this is now an effective power of 75, so it is hitting very hard for the early game. Roxanne is obviously a rock type specialist, and through level up I'm not going to access any other moves that would be strong against her, so I'm going to have to rely on my initial set. With the complicating factor of the slow growth rate, I think Vigoroth is kind of trapped in having to face every early game trainer to level up as much as is possible before it faces the first gym leader. I even spent some time on Route 116 training against wild Pokemon to get up to level 15 over another damage rounding threshold. This does give me time to catch an Abra, it's always convenient to have one of these in an Emerald playthrough. I can use it to teleport back to Rustboro City, and now I thought that I was ready to face Roxanne for the first time. Let's see how it went. Roxanne sends in Geodude first, and I immediately go for Focus Energy to increase my chance to crit. Ironically though, on this turn, the Geodude crits, dealing about one third in damage. I go for Uproar, and it is really not doing that much. Since I'm now locked into this move, I can't do anything else, and honestly, I wouldn't really want to. I'm just waiting for a critical hit. By the way, in Generation 3, Focus Energy raises your critical hit rate by two stages. Yes, this is a stage modifier. It ranges from 0 to 4. It actually goes above that, but the rate stays the same if you get to plus 4. In Generation 3, having a plus 2 critical hit ratio means you have a 25% chance to get one. While I do, it comes too late, and I only have 3 hit points left over for the remaining 2 Pokemon on Roxanne's team. Also, because of Rock Tomb, I am speed tied with the next Geodude. I do manage to get a critical hit, but it does only about a third. Roxanne hits with Rock Tomb, and Vigoroth goes down, getting its first reset. Okay, so it is time to knock out a bunch of Wismer. These give HP EVs, which is helpful to make you last just a little bit longer against Roxanne. And having a higher HP stat throughout the remainder of the playthrough is never a bad thing. My reset occurred at a time of 12 minutes and 18 seconds, and this training takes a long time because of the slow growth rate, meaning that Vigoroth gets to level 18 at a time of 17 minutes and 23 seconds. That is slightly more than 5 minutes of wild grinding. Let's see if this is enough to give Vigoroth the victory. Again, on the first turn, gonna set up Focus Energy. I don't think that anything else makes sense. And then, I'm going for Uproar, hoping for critical hits. 
Also, I'm hoping that Roxanne misses rock type moves because then I'm not going to take any damage. That being said, I have to dish out a lot because she has two potions and her nose pass also has an Orin Berry. I've had many requests to add the enemy items onto the overlay, both held items and trainer items. I've thought about it a lot. I'll probably eventually do it. The issue right now is one of space and providing too much information. Already there are some significant flaws with the visual styling. For example, if you are colorblind and you are looking at the enemy stats, it can be extremely hard to tell which is which. Not to mention, if you just aren't familiar with the color scheme that I'm using, it might also be really hard for you. If I correct this with an icon or a text indicator, then it takes up more space, which takes away from available space to display things like the effective power of the enemy's moves, stage modifiers, held item, or the Pokemon's level. Okay, so I had to buy some time there because it takes a while to knock out her Geodudes and move on to the Nose Pass. By this time, I have 10 speed, so it is not going to go for Rock Tomb. Instead, it's going to be using Block, Harden, and Tackle. Because it has a 2 in 3 chance of using a move that does no damage, I figured that I could go for Encore and try and lock it into either Block or Tackle. However, when the Nose Pass came out, I was already using an Uproar, so I could not discontinue and lock it into something right away but it's still a coin flip between Harden and Tackle. I went for it, I got the unfortunate option of locking Nose Pass into Tackle, exactly what I don't want it to do. It's already set up its defenses to plus two, however, when I get a critical hit, it bypasses this stat change and takes Nose Pass down to red health. It recovers to orange with an Orinberry, misses Tackle, I get another critical hit, taking it back to red health, and this fight has become very close, I think Vigoroth might be able to do it. Nose Pass hits Tackle, Vigoroth survives, strikes back with Uproar, and Roxanne is defeated. Okay, we did it! Level 18! It was close, but a win is a win. Her badge gives me a 10% boost to my attack stat. Also notably, Vigoroth cannot learn Rock Tomb. I find that kind of strange when it can learn a move like Earthquake. Anyways, today I won't have to deal with that move missing all the time. I head to the Mart, pick up some useful items for the rest of the playthrough, and then I defeat the Team Aqua member in Rust Turf Tunnel, saving Pico. After that I face the rival in Rust Bro City. This battle is not hard, I'll just mention here that he does have Torchic. It could be problematic in the next battle I have against him, but overall I feel like Vigoroth is very powerful and isn't going to have a problem with him today. I backtrack through Petalburg Forest and start to catch myself HM users. The first one is a Zigzagoon, which I nicknamed Fallen Hero. By the way, Fallen Hero, thank you so much for all of your super chats. I I really appreciate them. My Meryl gets named Evil Befall after a supporter, and then I catch myself a Talo, which I named Phoenix, after another channel supporter. So thank you so much to everyone who contributes to making these videos possible. I take the boat to Duford Island, grab myself the Silk Scarf, which is immediately useful to boost the power of Uproar by 10%, and then I deliver the letter to Steven Stone. Now I have a choice. Do I face Brawly, or do I head to Slateboard Beach first? You'll notice now that I'm going through the gym, by the way, this is the path to do it without fighting any trainers if you didn't already know what that was. While I do this, let me explain the reasons why I think fighting him now is a good idea. Number one, Uproar is very powerful and I have the Silk Scarf. Number two, Brawly likes to use Bulk Up, so Focus Energy can counter out the defense boost, and it also gives me time to set up my own Focus Energy. Number three, the Meditite can't do any damage, so it's essentially a free knockout. And number four, if I defeat him, I get the TM for Bulk Up, which Vigoroth can use. Alright, so let's see how the battle went. The first Pokemon he sends in is Machop. I figured that this would be the one to use Bulk Up, so I go for Focus Energy. And the Machop does use Bulk Up. Perfect. Because in this battle I am fast, I can now go for Encore so that it has to continue setting up with this move, and while it's stuck I can use Uproar to deal damage to it. I'm just really hoping for a crit here so that I knock it out before he heals it. The Machop gets set up to plus 5, making it very scary. Encore runs its course. I use Uproar again and get a lucky critical hit at the perfect moment, finishing the Machop in a single hit. I crit the following Metatite, knocking it out, and then his ace Makuhita comes in. On the first turn I don't get a crit, but I do about half. It does slightly less to me, eats its citrus berry, my next uproar takes it back down to under half health, and its vital throw takes Vigoroth to red. It seems very close, but my next uproar has enough damage, so Makuhita goes down, and Vigoroth has earned itself the second badge and the TM for bulk up. In this case, I teach it in the place of Focus Energy because it is by far the superior setup move. On Slate for Peach, I make sure to talk to this tuber just so I can get myself the Soft Sand. It'll be useful to boost the damage of Earthquake later on. After that, I defeat most of the trainers as well as the people in the little beach house to earn the Soda Pops, and then I defeat the Team Aqua Grunts in the museum. 
With them out of the way, I head north and continue my training on all the optional trainers here. This brings Vigoroth up to level 24, and now I have to face the rival. Okay, Combuskin, please do not mess this up for me. Luckily, I can just start the fight off against a Wingull, which is quite bad, so I can use Bulk Up to boost my defense and my attack. Luckily, the Wingull misses Supersonic. I use Uproar, and it goes down to a single hit. Combuskin's next. I have plus one attack, so I'm hoping this does more than half, but it actually just gets a knockout in one hit. Nice! So as predicted, the rifle is not a problem today. As I head into Marvel City, I pick up the HM for Rock Smash. This move is sometimes useful against Watson's Magneton, and I think that that's going to be the case for Vigoroth today. I teach it in the place of Uproar. By the way, that is because I'm going to train one more level so that Vigoroth can learn Slash. Unlike in Generation 1, this does not ignore positive stat changes, so it can be used in combination with a move like Bulk Up. With that, I'm ready to face Watson. He leads with Voltorb, which is really not that good. I have a Cherry Berry in case Spark paralyzes me, and I'm going to try and set up here as much as is possible. I get to plus 4, it paralyzes me, and I figured now is the time to sweep. I knock the Voltorb out, move on to the Electric, hit it with Slash, which does get the knockout, but it activates Static. This is a 1 in 3 chance, by the way, so I'm paralyzed going up against the Magneton. Note here, I'm using Rock Smash. I'm not sure that's the right choice. Slash actually has slightly higher effective power, and it does have a chance to critical hit, so I should probably be using that move instead. Either way, I am able to take out the Magneton, but because I'm slow due to paralysis, the Manectric can move first, causing a reset. In the next fight, things are a little bit different. The Voltorb uses Self-Destruct, so I don't have a chance to fully set up on it, but then the Electric just uses a lot of Howl while I set up with Bulk Up, so I get all the way to plus 5, and then I knock it out. Still, I am using Rock Smash on the Magneton. I really should be going for Slash here. Luckily, I still have my Cherry Berry, so its first Thunder Wave does nothing. He heals with a Super Potion. I go for Rock Smash again, and because the previous one lowered Defense, which is a 50% chance, I'm able to knock it out with my second hit, even though it was at green health. Last is Manectric, but because I'm at full health and Slash is doing so much damage, it is easy to finish off. Watson is usually the hardest gym leader in the entire game, especially when using a normal type, so he felt quite easy today, and I think that that is a good sign for what is to come. If I went back and did this run again, I just wouldn't teach Rock Smash, because the fact that I have it on my moveset now means that it is there until I reach Lily Cove City and in doing so unlock the move reminder. With Vigoroth, that isn't the worst thing in the world, because there aren't actually a lot of moves that I want to teach in the next section of the game. Normally, I would get Secret Power now, but Slash is just better than that move. Also, I usually obtain Dig here, but Vigoroth cannot learn Dig. I don't know, those little, like, claw paws, they look like they would be able to dig, but I get that this thing is a sloth, and sloths live in trees, so learning a ground-type move doesn't make a lot of sense. Why can this thing learn Earthquake? I don't know, that one is a mystery to me. At the top of Mount Chimney, I have to face Maxi. By the way, if you just watched my last few Emerald videos, he actually is sometimes a problem. Today, I don't think that that's going to be the case. I get a lucky bulk up in, which is convenient that the Mighty Anna did not use Sand Attack. Okay, there's the Sand Attack on the next turn. All is right with the world. My next Slash takes it down to a sliver of health. I miss, get hit by another bite, and then knock it out. So, not a great start to the fight. I probably should have just gone for Slash right away. By the way, in Generation 3, when you get a critical hit, it ignores your negative stat changes, and the opponent's positive stat changes. So if I had minus one attack and the Mighty NSA had plus one defense, it would ignore both of those stat changes and hit with my regular attack stat and the Mighty Anna's regular defense stat. Despite the sand attack, I make it to the camera up, I hit once, Maxi uses a super potion, and if I just hit one more time, I'm gonna finish it off, and Vigoroth does. With him out of the way, both figuratively and literally, I can walk one step to the right and pick up the meteorite. This is very useful because then I can use Avra to teleport back to Fall Arbor Town, go into this building right here, and talk to the scientist, who will exchange this item for the TM for Return. At the current moment in the run, Return has an effective power of 83, so it is going to be more powerful than a non-critical hit from Slash. Also, while I'm here in Fall Arbor Town, I realized that I forgot the person berries earlier on, so I'm going to go pick those up, and then I can use Abra to teleport back to the town, and now I'm ready to head to Flannery. For this battle, I could have used my standard strategy, which is set up on the Nummel and then sweep, but I got a little bit trigger happy and knocked the Nummel out right away with return. Oops! I guess the next Pokemon is Slugma, and it's also kinda bad, so I can just set up here. 
At plus three, I had taken more than half, so I figured now is the time to sweep. I knocked the Slugma out in a single hit. Next is Camrupt, which is also a one hit. The only Pokemon I think could survive is the Torkoal. It has great defenses, but in this case, it doesn't. So Vigoroth earns itself an easy fourth badge. This playthrough is going really well, not as well as a Pokemon like Exploud for that Pokemon. I was around Winona by this point in the run, but it is important to remember that Vigoroth is a mid-stage Pokemon, so its stats will just never be as good as a final evolution. I have to now backtrack to Petalburg City. There are a few ways to do this. You can take the boat back to Duford Island and then back to Petalburg City, or you can go through Meteor Falls and head through Rustboro City, or through Rustturf Tunnel in the center of the map, and then through Rustboro City. I personally prefer this last route because you pick up up strength by doing it, otherwise you're going to have to fly to one of these locations and grab strength anyways since it is required for the completion of the game. With that out of the way, I head into Norman's gym where Vigoroth very much feels at home. Will it be able to defeat these other normal types? Let's see. Up first is Spinda. It loves to confuse you with things like Teeter Dance and Psybeam, so I'm going to use the Person Berry here to set up for free. One thing I had to be a little bit worried about was the Spinda going for Encore and trapping me in the setup move. That being said, it doesn't do this, so I get to plus two and knock it out. Next, Norman sends in his ace, Slacking. This should be incredibly simple for Vigoroth. Bulk up on turn one so that it can't use counter, and then return when it's loafing around for maximum damage. The slacking survives the hit, but not with enough health to survive my next attack, so I don't even care about counter on the next turn. From there, it can knock out Norman's Vigoroth in a single hit, as well as his Linoon. So that was a very easy fifth badge. Access to Surf means I can collect a lot of really useful TMs. The first one is on the abandoned ship, it is Ice Beam, and then after that I head to New Mauville City, earning myself the TM for Thunderbolt from Watson. While we face the rival outside of Fort Tree City, I'm just going to say I love the fact that the game provides you these two TMs right before the flying type specialist. The game also does not force them upon you, you have to go out of your way to find them, and significantly so for both. So if you're just kind of mindlessly grinding through the plotline and not exploring optional areas, then you won't gain access to these incredible moves, but if you do take the time to explore, you are rewarded for it. I really think this is a sign of good game design, by the way. I think that it is slightly less good game design to just provide the player with the item that they need to solve the next trainer by default. So an example of that is giving the player Dig right before you face Surge in Generation 1. Anything the game can do to encourage exploration is always more interesting, and it also makes these solo challenges so much more enjoyable, because there is actually a cost-benefit analysis that I have to do when thinking about one of these items. Yes, Ice Beam has the potential to be very useful in Winona's Gym, but it's going to cost me extra real-time to go and obtain it. So if I could squeeze through Winona's Gym with only Return, I would save all of that time. For Vigoroth though, I wanted to have this coverage move, especially for the Altaria. With Ice Beam on my set in the place of what was formerly Encore, Vigoroth seems to be set up for success against Winona. Nona. Swablu is first. This thing might seem like a good Pokemon to set up on, but it does have Perish Song, so it really isn't. As a result, I have to go for Return right away and knock it out. By the way, I did not replenish my PP for this fight, so I only have four uses of Ice Beam. Luckily, I think that that should be enough. I one-shot the Tropius. Next is Pelipper. I'm going to use Bulk Up here once while it goes for Protect. Then I can hit with Return and knock it out in a single hit. Next, she sends in Skarmory. I think I have to use Ice Beam here. It does just a little bit less than half, and then the Skarmory hits with Sand Attack. I use Return instead to see how much damage it's dealing. After all, I have more PP with this move. Looks like about the same as Ice Beam. Things are a bit worrying here because Winona does use two Hyper Potions on Skarmory, but despite the accuracy drop, I hit with Return enough times and finish it off. All that's left is Altaria. I go for Ice Beam, it hits, and with that, Winona is defeated. I've earned myself the TM for Aerial Ace. In Mount Pyre, I head through the interior up to the top floor where I can grab the TM for Shadow Ball. In Generation 3, just remember that this is a physical move. And I always love the interaction of Shadow Ball getting set up through the use of Bulk Up. It feels so wrong for a fighting type move to be boosting a ghost type move's damage. For whatever reason, when I said that sentence just now, I was like, is Lick still a physical move? Because everyone says that the ghost type is physical specifically because Lick is physical. So I had to go and look it up, and yeah, Lick is still physical. So if you really want in a modern Pokemon game, you can get all kinds of crazy by using Bulk Up in combination with Lick. I absolutely love that that is still an interaction that can play out. The Magma Hideout's next, I have to face Maxi here. He shouldn't be a problem, I have a setup move like Bulk Up. Also the Person Berry, but I don't even use it, I just knock the Mighty Anna out. Crobat does a little bit of damage, I take it down, and Camerupt is pretty bad. I am still faster than it with minus 2 speed. 
Matt and the team Aqua Hideout is easy to defeat, and then I head into Shoal Cave to pick up the Shell Bell. Remember, this is one of two ways that Vigoroth has access to recovery. The other way is leftovers, and I can only obtain that after the League. You have to be able to get onto the SS Tidal, because it's in one of the trash cans on that ship. So now that I've reached Moss Deep City, it's time to take on Tate and Liza. I want to make a quick note here, which is the fact I forgot to use the move reminder to get rid of Rock Smash. That means I'm going to have to teach Shadow Ball in the place of Return, but that's okay because there is a secondary Return TM in Pacific Logtown. And I do always get that flyaway point in my playthroughs, so it isn't out of the way. Okay, so let's see if Vigoroth can win, even when two Pokemon are up against it. They lead with Zatu and Claydol. Here, I'm going to go for one bulk up to boost my attack stat as much as is possible. Also, this means I take way less damage from Earthquake. The Claydol does pathetic damage, so much so that I do another bulk up just because I felt safe to do it. Unfortunately, Zatu confuses me. Instead of setting up more, I hit myself once. The Zatu goes back to setting up. Claydol hits Earthquake, taking Vigoroth just to above half health. Shadow Ball hits, finishing the Claydol off, and then they send in Lunatone. Zatu continues its setup. Because it's getting quite scary, I decide to knock it out, but this is going to be a loss because the Zatu finally decides to attack after setting up. In the next fight, I change one small factor, my held item. In the last case, I had a citrus berry just to give me a little bit more health, but I think a person berry is far better so that I can't be messed up by confusion. This allows me to set up to plus two relatively for free and then start my sweep. The only reason I was unable to knock the Zatu out in the previous fight was because I hit myself in confusion. This time I uh, misclick on the Lunatone, knocking it out after the Zatu started to attack, but luckily it goes back to setup. That is what I needed. I can use Shadow Ball to finish it off, and all they have left is Soul Rock. The sun is up, so it's able to hit with Solar Beam, but Vigoroth shrugs it off, and I finish their final Pokémon. This win gives me a boost to my special attack and special defense, meaning all of Vigoroth's coverage moves, like Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, are going to hit harder. And Vigoroth is about to get access to even more coverage moves. So I head back to Lily Cove City and delete Rock Smash, freeing up one move slot. I put Return in its place just so I have same type attack bonus damage. Notably, I want to keep both Shadow Ball and Ice Beam on my moveset for the next portion of the game because they are going to be useful during the league. Ice Beam is very strong against Drake, even if you don't have a great special attack stat. I have found that out in a previous video. And Shadow Ball, of course, is going to be useful to defeat Phoebe. Also, there is only one bulk up TM in the entire game, so if I forget this move, I can't get access to it again. And that obviously isn't a good idea because it is by far the best move that Vigoroth has against Steven Stone. Because of these factors, when I pick up the Earthquake, TM, it is not going to be immediately useful. I also have to face Archie without Thunderbolt. Honestly, he is not very good. I have heard that the last battle with Cyrus in the Distortion world is actually quite difficult, and that's going to be refreshing, because I am used to this battle at the end of the plot line being quite underwhelming. With it out of the way, I release Rayquaza, head into Sutopolis City, and get myself another coverage move in the form of Brick Break. However, once again, I don't want to teach it right now, so let's face Juan with the set that I have currently. Up first is Love Disk, I can set up for free on this thing until it confuses me and uses my Person Berry. That does happen right away, so I'm going to have to sweep with plus one. I finish the Love Disk off in a single hit, as well as the bulkier Whiskash, which is very promising. Celio goes down to a single hit. Alright, this is going to be a clean sweep, isn't it? If anything, maybe the Kingdra is going to survive. It can get annoying with things like Double Team. In this case, it does survive. It does boost its evasion. Juan uses a Hyper Potion. My next return misses. Then I hit, taking it back down to red health. It goes for another double team, lowering my chance to hit to 60%. Juan uses another Hyper Potion. All right, um, I'm about to run out of return PP. Plus the Kingdra has a Chesto Berry, so it can use Rest to heal itself all the way to full again. Note here that I used Ice Beam pretty much just because I was like, hey, I might freeze but that's the wrong choice. Since it's setting up double team, I should probably be setting up bulk up so that I deal massive damage when I attack next. As a result of this indecisive play, I get taken to lowish health and I basically have to attack with return. That being said, Ice Beam did do something useful. It left the Kingdra at green health, meaning it didn't go for rest and heal. Because of that, return has enough damage and Kingdra goes down. The battle against Wally in the League is very interesting from a story perspective, at least in the remakes. In these games, it doesn't really hit that hard because you only see Wally twice previously in the game, once when he catches his Ralts, and then he battles you outside of Watson's gym where he really isn't that good, and then you see him here and he still isn't that good. 
Plus, it doesn't have the absolute banger of a track that is in the remakes. I just wish that that audio was a little bit longer. It's awesome, but it gets kind of grating if you listen to it over and over. With him out of the way, I pass through Victory Road, backtrack to the flower shop to pick up the white herb, and now I think I'm ready to face Sydney. It may seem like a serious omission not to have Brick Break on my set at this time. That being said, I don't think it's the case. I want to save that TM to be used in combination with Earthquake against Steven at the end of the game. If I had taught it now, I would overwrite it before the end of the league for a better move like Return, and since I have used both Return TMs to this point in the playthrough, I don't want to unlearn that move for Brick Break now. Either way, using the White Herb to counter out Intimidate and then one turn of Bulk Up, I am able to get through Sydney's team with minus one accuracy and make it all the way to his Absol. Then things get very scary because it sets up Swords Dance twice, giving it 396 attack. I was so worried that I was going to miss this hit, but luckily, I don't, and with that, Sydney is defeated. Up next is Phoebe. This fight's so simple. Just set up Bulk Up once when the Dusclops goes for Protect, and then use Shadow Ball to sweep the rest of her Pokémon. I will mention here another slight annoyance about the Sydney fight. I should have taught Return to Vigoroth after I defeat Phoebe. In the second playthrough, I'd use Shadow Ball in combination with Bulk Up to defeat Juan. Then for Sydney and Phoebe, I could have Aerial Ace, which benefits from Bulk Up and bypasses accuracy checks. It's also super effective against two of Sydney's Pokémon, it means that Sand Attack is irrelevant during that fight, and then once I make it to Phoebe, I can use it on Sableye if it sets up Double Team. Overall, Aerial Ace is just such a fantastic move for the first two League members. In the end, this doesn't matter, it has no impact on the real time, because I'm able to make it by both of the trainers without a reset. Glacia is next, and at this point Shadow Ball has now basically become useless. The only Pokémon from here on out that it's really good against is Claydol on Steven's team. Notably though, the Claydol is actually not very good unless you are weak to ground or rock moves. And that's not the case for Vigoroth, so I teach Brick Break in the place of Shadow Ball. Funny story though, I probably just shouldn't have done this and relied on Return, because Brick Break's effective power when it is super effective is slightly lower than Return's. This really does feel like a Generation 2 moment. Either way, Glacia's easy, I finish her off, and move on to Drake. I figured that this fight would be easy, I'm gonna get to set a bulk up once on the Shellgon, and then knock it out with Return. Okay, I just barely don't have the damage required. Fine, I guess I'll knock it out over two turns and have my speed lowered by Rock Tomb. Now I am slower than his remaining four Pokemon, and to make matters worse, Ice Beam is not one hitting. I get paralyzed by the Altaria. Luckily I have a Cherry Berry. I move on to the Kingdra, it hits Surf, dealing a lot of damage. I am not able to knock it out, and Vigoroth has a reset. I tried again with the same strategy, this time employing the Never Melt Ice for a little bit more Ice type damage against the Altaria, but it still survives. After that loss, I open my bag. I have 12 rare candies by this point, and I think it's time to use them. But I'm going to be fairly conservative here, just because I am a normal type going up against Steven Stone. So I use 3, bringing myself up to level 60. What this allows is a one-shot on the Shellgon with Ice Beam, a one-shot on the Altaria with Ice Beam, and because I've got by both of those two, my speed stat is now intact. Against the Kingdra, I can go for Return, finishing it in what would have been two turns if he didn't use a full Restore. Because of the healing item, he's able to hit with Surf, doing about half, but Flygon that follows takes four times damage from Ice Beam, so I finish it in one hit. While Salamence is intimidating, that doesn't matter, because I'm using Ice Beam against it, and in doing so, I finish Drake off. It's time to get prepared for Wallace. To do this, I give the Shell Bell in the place of the Never Melt Ice, and then I teach Thunderbolt over Ice Beam. This move is very useful, at least against the Gyarados. So now, let's see how a level 60 Vigoroth fares against the Champion. Up first is Wailord. I probably should have used Return on this thing right away, but I don't. I set up with Bulk Up and then go for Thunderbolt. I don't know what I'm doing. As a result, I take a Water Spout, which does about half. And I feared from that damage range I could survive another one, so I go for bulk up again, raising my attack to plus 2. Now I only have 15 hit points, so I need to attack using the Shell Bell to recover some HP. He sends in Tentacruel next, which I one-shot with Return, gaining back some health. Ludicolo follows, and it is exactly the same. Alright, things are going well. Whiskash is next. I go for Return. This thing usually survives, but it actually doesn't. So I have made it to the Gyarados, and I'm back around half health. It intimidates Vigoroth, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to be using Thunderbolt here. I was very surprised when it didn't get the one hit, 
Gyarados goes for Dragon Dance, which boosts its speed to 169, which is really nice for it because now it outspeeds Vigoroth by 2 points. Because Gyarados is on low red health, I can anticipate that Wallace is going to use a full restore on it. I figured that Return would do more damage than Thunderbolt, but it actually doesn't. However, Wallace has more full restores, so I anticipate the next one use Bulk Up instead of attacking, giving me one more stage of attack modifier. The Gyarados hits with Surf, taking Vigoroth to orange health, and my next return does enough damage to finish it off. The only Pokemon left on his team is Milotic. It does not have as much defense as Gyarados and only a little bit more HP. I use return and it goes down. The champion fight was a little bit bumpy, but I managed to pull through on my first attempt. Overall, I am really satisfied with this Vigoroth playthrough. It clocks in with a league time of 1 hour 56 minutes and 37 seconds with 5 resets at level 61. This is a game time of 7 hours and 7 minutes. By the way, in the new year we will have a Wallace tier list as well as a Steven tier list, just so we can separate out these two finish times, because some Pokemon really thrive all the way until they defeat Wallace. For example, it is easier to defeat him with grass types, and then Steven just becomes this invincible wall, which really delays Pokemon like Sceptile from getting good results. So I do think that that's going to be an interesting alternative way to look at all of this data. But now with Vigoroth, we need to get prepared for Steven Stone. To do this, I go to the game corner and buy myself the TM for Flamethrower. After all, this move can be very useful against him. But if I can avoid it, I would really like to. Instead, it makes much more sense to be using a physical set, so I teach Earthquake in the place of Return, and then I use Rare Candies to bring Vigoroth up to level 70. Now Vigoroth is ready for its ultimate test. Let's see how it does against Steven Stone. As the fight starts, I just want to say that this music sounds so ancient, and that was the idea behind selecting this track for him. After all, he's using fossils as well as rocks. So it makes sense that the Steel and Rock type specialist starts the fight off with the move Toxic. Yeah, I have the Shell Bell, so that is immediately a reset. I guess I need a Petcha Berry for this fight. Remember, Rest is not a viable option. Unfortunately, using a Petcha Berry means I can only heal from Toxic once, so if I want to set up fully against the Skarmory, I am going to have to get lucky, and I don't in the next fight, so I have another reset. Actually, not just one more reset, but two more resets. Eventually, I figure that just using Thunderbolt to knock out the Skarmory as fast as possible and then potentially setting up on a different Pokemon would be the better choice. So I'm going to try to set up on his following Armaldo. There is a complication here, which is it's using Water Pulse, which can cause confusion and really mess me up. I get to plus four, my health is low, so I figure I need to start sweeping, but even with this amount of attack, I'm not able to one-shot Steven's Pokemon. I tried a couple more times setting up on the Skarmory, but it doesn't work out due to Toxic, so now I'm going to need to investigate an alternate approach. I spend time in Victory Road training up to level 73, and then I come back to face Steven again. I use a Petcha Berry here, set up to plus three against the Skarmory, and then knock it out with two uses of Thunderbolt. By the way, level 73 enables the two shot there. It doesn't look like it's possible at level 70. If you're wondering why I don't have exact damage ranges here, it is because the rooting software has not yet been expanded to incorporate Generation 3. However, that is currently being worked on. So starting in 2024, my playthroughs in Emerald version are going to get a lot more accurate. With the Armaldo coming out next, you can see that my goal is to complete my setup with Bulk Up here, but it confuses me, and as the result of two turns of self-inflicted damage, I have another reset. So Vigoroth is feeling very similar to another normal type, Exploud, which absolutely steamrolled the game in dominant fashion, arrived at Steven Stone, and then really didn't do very well. Granted, for Exploud, it took me a while to figure out that I should be using a physical set, which was a major player error. Here with Vigoroth, I had that experience, so I was trying to do that from the start, but this thing is just not quite powerful enough as a middle stage Pokemon. In the next battle, things are different because I don't try to set up as much, instead just prioritizing sweeping through Steven's Pokemon. I survive the Armaldo with one hit point and make it to the Claydol, and then I realize that I have a significant problem against this thing if I don't have recovery or reliable damage against it. We're going to skip a couple of resets and jump into this fight specifically because I want to show what happens when I finally do get fully set up. I too hit the Skarmory with Thunderbolt, move on to the Armaldo, and use Earthquake, knocking it out in a single hit. 
Next is Claydol, and because my defense stat is buff, I'm actually not taking very much damage against it, and it can't set up screens because I'm using Brick Break. I've had some fumbles in my voiceover with that in the past where I say like I'm scared of it getting reflect up and there's like Brick Break sitting on my set, and then everyone writes in the comments, but you have Brick Break, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know, that interaction isn't in Generation 1 or 2, so I'm not that used to it yet. The unfortunate thing with plus 6 is that I'm just barely not able to two-shot the Claydol using Brick Break. It survives with a sliver, Steven uses a full restore, and I have to continue attacking it. That being said, despite it attacking me, I do survive on 23 hit points and move on to Steven's final three Pokemon. Up first is Agron. I have four times damage with Earthquake here, finishing it in a single turn. Next is Cradley, and I get a critical hit here, so I easily one-shot, making it to Steven's final Pokemon, Metagross. Vigoroth is faster, it has super effective damage, and the Steel Psychic type goes down. So Vigoroth clocks in with a final time of 2 hours, 16 minutes, and 15 50 seconds, with 16 resets at level 73. This is a game time of 7 hours and 56 minutes. So where do these real-time results place it in my tier list? Well, it's around the middle, it's just a little bit slower than Cradley, and quite a bit faster than Breloom. So today it earns itself the last spot in the C tier. You might look at this tier list and be confused with Mewtwo and Rayquaza's placements, that's fair, this is a series of first playthroughs, and I did those two early on. As a result, I was less experienced, so let's rank Pokemon now based on game time, which is generally the more accurate first playthrough metric. In this case, Vigoroth gets the exact same game time as a Pokemon like Absol. However, I'm going to note here that Absol had 38 resets, whereas Vigoroth only had 16. Reading into this data, I think that Absol would be able to be optimized a little bit more, whereas Vigoroth got a contemporary playthrough and it had less resets. There is less room to optimize, so overall I think that it's going to perform worse. Because of that, I'm going to rank it just behind Absol and ahead of Cradley, once again in the C tier. So that's it for today's Vigoroth video, I hope this was really fun for all of you. Tomorrow we are going to come back to Pokemon Emerald and see how slacking its evolution can do. The reason I'm doing these two back to back is because slacking has absolutely monstrous base stats. That being said, it has one of the worst abilities in the history of Pokemon. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much, you're incredible, I'll see you in the next one.